Hello everyone, myself Dr. Asa Arya. I am Associate Professor at Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, SDT University. Today I will be covering the topic Fundamentals of Tooth Preparation for Amalgam. And this will be covered under the following headings. First is the definition, second objectives of tooth preparation, third is the classification of tooth preparation, fourth stages of tooth preparation and next is the newer concepts of tooth preparation. So coming to the definition, what do you mean by tooth preparation? Tooth preparation, it is a mechanical alteration of the deceased or the defective tooth, whatever defect is there, we want to mechanically alter it and then restore it with the restorative material so as to re-establish the normal form and function of the tooth. Coming to the objectives of the tooth preparation, the first objective is to remove all the diseased and the defective tissue. Whatever diseased or defective tissue is there, we need to remove it and then restore it and at the same time we have to provide protection to the pulp. Next is conservative extension of the cavity. The cavity should be extended as minimal as possible so as to conserve the tooth structure. Next is the tooth preparation, it should be such that both the restoration as well as the tooth, it should not fracture under the load of mastication or any other occlusal loads. Moreover, the restoration should also not get dislodged while the masticatory forces are applied or due to tipping or lifting forces. And the last objective is to allow for the aesthetic as well as functional placement, functional placement of the restorative material. So these were the objectives of the tooth preparation. Now next coming to the classification of the tooth preparation, it was given by Dr. G. V. Black. According to Dr. G. V. Black, there are five types of tooth preparation. First is class 1. These are cavities on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth. So if this is a premolar, so cavities on the occlusal surface of premolar or on the occlusal surface of molar teeth. So cavities on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth, this is the first subgroup. The second subgroup is cavities on the occlusal one third of the facial or the lingual surface of the molars. That is, suppose if this is a molar and this is a buccal groove, so cavities extending onto the occlusal one third of the facial or the lingual surface of the molars. And the third subgroup is cavities on the lingual surface of the anterior teeth. So here, this is the posterior surface or the lingual surface of the anterior teeth. So cavities on the lingual surface of the anterior teeth. All these three, they come under the class 1 type of tooth restorations. Next is the class 2. Class 2 are cavities on the proximal surface of the posterior teeth, that is on the molars and the premolars. So This is the proximal surface of the posterior teeth and the cavities on the proximal surface that is either the mesial or the distal surface of the posterior teeth are the class 2 cavities. Next are the class 3. So class 3 are cavities on the proximal surface of the anterior teeth. So this is the anterior teeth and cavities on the proximal surface of the anterior teeth without involving the incisal angle come under the class 3. Next is Next is class 4. Class 4 are cavities on the proximal surface of the anterior teeth which involve the incisal angle. So cavities which involve the incisal angle as well on the proximal surface of the anterior teeth, these are the class 4 cavities. And next is the class 5 that is cavities on the gingival third, this is gingival third of the facial and the lingual surface of all the teeth that is class 5 cavities and class 6, class 6 was given by Simon, these are cavities on the occlusal cusp heights of the posterior teeth. So cavities on the occlusal cusp heights of the posterior teeth and the incisal edges of the 
anterior teeth. These are the class 6 cavities. So, this was about the classification of the tooth restorations. Now, next coming to the stages of tooth preparation. Tooth preparation is divided into two stages. First is the initial stage and next is the final stage. So, it is divided into initial and final stages. Now, coming to the initial stages, it is further subdivided into four different steps. First is the outline form. Next is the primary resistance form. Next is the primary retention form. And the last step in initial stage is convenience form. So, we will discuss each step one by one. First is the outline form. Outline form, what do you mean by an outline form? It is placing the margins of the preparation in the position they will occupy in the final preparation without finishing of the enamel walls and margins. That is, we prepare a rough outline of our cavity. So, there are different principles and features of the outline form. Coming to the principles, principles of the outline form, we need to remove all the weakened tissue and the defects that is there, all the weakened and the friable enamel has to be removed. Next is all the faults have to be included. We need to include all the faults. So, these were the principles of outline form. Next are the features of the outline form. Next are the features of the outline form. So, what are the features of outline form? First is preserving the strength of the cusp as well as the marginal ridge. So, we need to preserve the strength of our tooth as much as possible. So, cusp and marginal ridge strength has to be preserved. Next is the facial removal extension of the cavity has to be as minimal or as conservative as possible. So, facial lingual extension has to be minimal, ok. Next feature is coming to the next feature, the initial depth of the cavity has to be 0.2 to 0.8 millimeter into dentino enamel junction. So, the depth of the cavity initially should be 0.2 to 0.8 mm into dentine and in case of the proximal box, this depth the, of the axial wall has to be 0.2 or 0.8 mm into the towards the pulp into the dentine. And the next feature is connecting two defects which are very close to each other. If the two defects are less than 0.5 mm apart from each other, then we need to connect these two defects. And also if there is a defect which is very shallow, you need not prepare the whole cavity, just we can do enameloplasty and remove the defect. So, next is enameloplasty. So, now let me explain it with the diagrams. In case of a mandibular molar, the outline form will be something like this. So, this is the outline form for a mandibular molar and for a premolar, the outline form is going to be like this. So, we have covered the outline form. Next is the primary resistance form. What do you mean by resistance form? Resistance form is that shape and placement of the preparation walls which will allow both the restoration as well as the tooth to withstand the masticatory forces which are delivered principally along the long axis of the tooth without the restoration and the tooth getting fractured. Coming to the principles and features of the primary resistance form. First is a box shaped cavity with a flat pulpal floor. So, this is a box shaped cavity with a flat pulpal floor. This is the tooth. So, if this pulpal floor is not flat, 
and suppose if the cavity preparation is scoop shaped what will happen when the masticatory forces are delivered along the long axis of the tooth the restoration it will move in this direction it will get dislodged and may also cause fracture of the tooth here hence a box shaped cavity with a flat pulpal flow will provide resistance to the cavity and the restoration next is the thickness of the restorative material for amalgam this thickness has to be minimum of 1.5 mm so that it will resist the load which will be there due to the masticatory forces if the cavity is wider then in those cases suppose if the cavity is wide then in those cases we need to capping of the cusp has to be done in order to ensure the strength of the cusp so cuspal capping is done in those cases next is rounding of the internal line angles these line angles they should not be sharp but rounding of these line angles is done so that there is uniform distribution of the stresses in the tooth and the tooth as well as the restoration will not fracture next is the primary retention form now what do you mean by retention form retention form is that shape and form of the preparation that will resist the displacement of the restoration due to tipping or lifting forces and there are two main features for this first is the occlusal convergence of the axial walls and next is the dovetail this is the occlusal convergence of the axial walls of the cavity the angle of convergence is 2 to 5 degrees so when the base is wider and the occlusal surface is narrower the restoration it will not get dislodged due to the tipping or lifting forces and this will help in the retention of the restoration in the cavity and next is the occlusal dovetail you remember the outline form it was like this so this this is known as the occlusal dovetail here the cavity is wider here it is narrower so this dovetail will enable the restoration to be present in the cavity that is it will not get dislodged due to tipping or lifting forces so these are two primary features of the retention form coming next to the convenience form convenience form is that form of the cavity which will enable easy accessibility easy visibility and ease of instrumentation of the cavity we can check the convenience form by means of a parallelogram condenser coming to the final stages of tooth preparation in the final stages the first one is removing remaining carious or infected dentine and the old restorative material so we need to remove infected dentine and the old restorative material we will inspect the cavity if we find any infected dentine or any old restorative material in the cavity we will remove only that portion with the help of a round bar we won't touch the other parts of the cavity so suppose this is our cavity if we inspect our cavity and we see that the caries is still remaining in this portion what we do we remove only this portion of the tooth that is this portion of the cavity is further prepared with the help of a round bar rest of the cavity we don't touch so the preparation will be like this now it will be like this so this is the uh, removing of the old restorative material or the infected dentine coming to the next stage is protection of the pulp if we find that our cavity is deep and it is very near to the pulp if the distance is less than 0.5 mm then we protect the pulp by means of a cavity liner calcium hydroxide is generally used for this purpose so we place calcium hydroxide in this region as a liner over it we give a base either of zinc phosphate zinc polycarboxylate gic and over it the restorative material is placed so this was the pulp protection this was pulp protection moving further 
to the next stage that is secondary resistance and retention features. Secondary resistance and retention features. If we find that we need to aid our uh, retention and resistance features, then some secondary features are there such as retention, grooves, slots, locks, amalgam pins. and some other. So what do you mean by a slot or an amalgam pin? So this is our cavity. This is suppose the tooth structure and this is the restorative material that we have placed. This restorative material may get the slot. In order to aid in further retention, we'll prepare a box type of this cavity here and then restore it with the amalgam and this will aid in for the retention of the restorative material in the cavity. This is the amalgam pin. We can also give slots. Slots are uh, like this. These are 0.5 mm wide here. Here it is 0.6 mm wide. So these are prepared in the dentine to approximately 0.5 mm into DEJ. So these are the secondary resistance and retention features. Next step is finishing of the external walls of the preparation margins. Why do we want to finish the external walls of the preparation margins? This is done so that there is a smooth junction between the restorative material as well as the tooth. This will also ensure maximum strength of the restorative material at the junction. So smooth margins with the maximum strength at the junction. Next, the final stage is cleaning the cavity, inspecting it, and if required, we can seal the cavity. So we have covered the initial and the final stages of the tooth preparation. Our tooth preparation is done. Now moving further to the next heading that is the newer concepts in the tooth preparation. First, what are the different concepts? First is amalgam box only preparation. Till now, what we have covered, there was an extensive preparation of the cavity. But with the amalgam box only preparation, if there is a cavity only on the proximal surface of the tooth, what we do, we just prepare a box proximally. We do not extend our cavity on the occlusal surface and then restore it. This is known as amalgam box. Only a box is prepared, no extension on the occlusal surface to conserve the tooth structure. Next is tunnel shape preparation. This is also conservative form of cavity preparation. Suppose if there is a cavity on the proximal surface of the tooth and on the occlusion surface of the tooth, but the marginal ridge is intact. We want to conserve the strength of the marginal ridge, so we prepare a tunnel like this. We do not touch the marginal ridge. So this will conserve the marginal ridge and aid in the strength of the tooth. This is known as amalgam tunnel type of tooth preparation. Next is enameloplasty. If the defect is shallow, we need not prepare a conventional cavity. We can just remove the defect and then uh, there is no need for restoration. So this will preserve the tooth structure. This was enameloplasty. And next is bonded amalgam restorations. So bonded amalgam restorations also come under the newer concepts of tooth preparation. So we have covered the newer concepts of tooth preparation. 
I think we have covered the topic fundamentals of tool preparation for amalgam and the concepts are clear for everyone. Thank you.